It's new bike day. No, not this one, but a new dirt jumper. Let's talk about it. Hello again, everyone. Josh here with Daily Mountain Bike Rider. And I am super stoked about this video because this is the third out of the four new bikes that I will be riding for the season or preferable future. Whenever you're watching us, I'll be riding them for a while. And this is the bike I'm most stoked about because it's the one bike that I will be keeping for a very long time. And that is because it is my new dirt jumper. Now, if you've been following along with the channel for a while, you'll know not only do I love dirt jumpers, I love the pump track, um, but along with that, I've been super lucky that I was sponsored by NS Bikes. They are world renowned for making really good dirt jumpers. I've been using their movement dirt jumpers, which I'll talk about a little later in the video. Um, but since my sponsorship with NS ended, it was time to find a new dirt jumper. And my goal in searching for one was to find the best value for the best components that I could find. So two biggest challenges. Number one, bike availability is super low right now with COVID, or at least it has been. So I had to pre-order my bike months in advance and I just got it a couple weeks ago. Second thing I had to put up against is that of the available dirt jumpers that you can buy complete from well-known companies, most of them are very expensive. You can easily spend over $2,000 just to get an air fork and some decent wheels and cranks. So after a lot of searching, a lot of waiting for a pre-order, my bike finally arrived and I cannot wait to show you my new dirt jumper. Let's get over there. And here is my new bike, the 2021 YT Dirt Love. As I was saying, I was looking for a bike that was the best bang for your buck and YT hands down beats everybody else in the competition. You get the uh, DJ Pike fork, you get a nice SRAM crank, which of course I upgraded to my FSA Comet crank. You get great bars and stem, uh, great brake, everything all together is the complete package for a great price and it ships to your door. Now, let me cover real quick all the specs on this bike so that you can know why I picked it and why I really do think it's good. Let's start from the bottom, work our way up. First up with tires, we've got Maxxis front and rear, run in some DJ tires. So on the front, this is actually an Icon, which I think is a cross country tire, but does a good job to get more traction on the front. And then on the back, you have the DTH, which is a super fast rolling tire. These are great like summer dirt jumper tires, but especially in Washington, it's nice to have a little more traction in the front. For these wheels, these are just YT's wheel set. They do have DT Swiss rims with generic hubs. Um, these hold up really well so far, and I don't think they're gonna have any issue whatsoever. Up to the drivetrain, of course, you've got a standard dirt jumper one by. At the crank, like I said, I have my Comet crank. These are bulletproof, super budget friendly with an FSA bottom bracket. Moving up from there, you've got the Pike DJ. This is the 2021 graphics. Even though all the DJs are basically the same, they have 100 millimeters of travel. They have a solo air. I thought this fork was gonna be a little more plusher, um, but actually it feels firmer than my coil shocks, but it gives a lot of support. It's very consistent in the dirt jump and on jump. So, so far that's been very good. Moving up from there from the saddle, have a STG saddle with the fancy little tightener in the middle of the seat. My brain exploded when I saw that's how it works, crazy. Moving up to the bars, we've got the FSA Comet bar and stem. Of course, once again, very budget friendly, but you get the 35 millimeter clamp diameter. So it's very strong. For brakes, got a level TL, which is a cross country brake, but really you don't use your brakes very often. So it's good enough with a SRAM centerline rotor on the rear. And then last but not least, we've got our ODI grips. I've always liked ODI grips. These ones are a little more streamlined, but they've been very good. So that's the new dirt jumper. And I bet you're wondering how I think this feels compared to my last two dirt jumpers. If you haven't had, followed the channel, I've had some really cool dirt jumpers from NS who were my sponsors. Um, both of these were aluminum, which is different than this chromoly steel frame. Also, they had coil forks on them, whereas this one has an air. So first ride impressions. Right off the bat, this bar is definitely much lower than the higher rise bars that I'm used to. So the bike overall felt very different just in overall feel, but then the frame material being steel, uh, the bike did feel a little bit heavier. Um, and I didn't notice too much of a difference from my aluminum dirt jumpers, to be perfectly honest. The biggest difference I could tell is the fork. Like I was saying earlier, the fork is very supportive, um, much more consistent and much less of a pogo stick like I felt on my lower end coil forks. So I am a huge fan of the Pike DJ. And it's really the reason I bought this whole bike is because this, from what I can tell, is the cheapest complete dirt jumper that comes with the Pike DJ. All I have left to do now is ride this bike more often. And luckily in Bellingham, we have great opportunities like right here, Whatcom Falls Park pump track. We also have the Waypoint Park one, which I haven't filmed enough at. It's an awesome pump track. And then last but not least, there's even a paved Cordata pump track that I need to check out. 
All right, guys, I think that wraps it up. Pretty simple video, but pretty stoked on this dirt jumper. Now it's time to get out there and ride it more often. You know what time it is. Don't spend too much time watching a guy talk about all the new bikes he's getting, but get out there, ride your bike. Make sure you do it every day.